So what is batch processor? Spencer, maybe you can help me out with this? Yeah, so a batch processor is a uh, batch file generated from 3DCS that you can actually run outside of the 3DCS application. Uh, it still obviously uses a license, takes me a license. Um, but one of the powerful things about batch processor is that uh, it can, you know, you can set it up so that it runs overnight and uh, you, you aren't, you know, occupying a workstation during business hours. And um, also another nice thing about it is that you can set it up so that it uh, runs all three analyses. So you can run your Monte Carlo simulation, your HLM sensitivity, and then in, you know, in series, then run the GeoFactor right away versus having to click another button in order to get the GeoFactor running as well. And it works with our add-on modules. So if you have a fairly exactly. large model yep. or you've got a game plan model, you can even run it over the weekend, have your results waiting for you to come back. Uh, another nice thing I know about it is uses the DOS command line, which is nice if you want to program some special functions or if you want yep. to, to load additional models, so you can run a couple of different analyses, which is Hence, what sign of experiments really is, or change parameters. Um, one nice thing is this provided with all of our installations. So, this is not an additional add on module. Everyone who has 3DCS Variation Analyst in any of its forms, regardless of what CAD system it's in, does have access to Batch Processor. Um, as far as I understand, it's working in all of our different versions. Yes. So, so even if you're in Creo or NX or some of our newer versions, batch processor is working. So what can it do for you? As Spencer mentioned, you can run all of your analyses as well as being able to do a number of different uh, types of custom analyses that you can run without having to have um, software open and working within it, so you can set that up to run overnight, or you can have it set up to run on another machine, or with a cluster of machines. So <clears throat> that's really the, the great value here, is ability to run long analyses, and have the results waiting for you, run multiple types of models back to back, and of course run your analyses overnight to free up your workstation during business hours. So. At this time, I'm going to be passing the presentation over to Maria. Maria, if you want to say hello. Good morning, everybody. Let me share my screen. So today I'm going to talk about batch processor and the DOE. Both these functions are used once you completed your model. And I'm going to use for both of them the same model, the mechanical model for the engine block that we have in our tutorials. It should be well known to everybody watching this webinar. Um, batch processor has your steps in the DOE. I'm going to start with this one. Let's say we have this model and we just want to run the results after we completed it without worrying uh, or, or sitting next to it and clicking the buttons like then as Spencer we just talked about. To launch the batch processor it's pretty simple. Usually from any platform you go, you go to start the statistical analysis and select the batch processor. Before we do that I'm going to show you one little thing. We have here the files, the model files, which is this model, and that, that's all there is in this folder. For um, ease of use, you would want to set up your preferences to save everything at the model location basically to save your files in the same folder where the model is, that way you can find a piece. So that is one setting that you want to do before running the batch. Now, please watch this window while I'm opening the batch process. So 
that this analysis can match. As soon as I launch this batch processor, these three files were created. The first one is the script file, which I'm going to talk about more later. The second one is the batch, which is actually the command file. And it also makes a copy of the CS model. This is the one that's going to be used to actually run the calculation in the back. And once you open this dialog, you can just click the run button. Once you clicked it, it starts working on the files and it populates, it adds more information into this uh, general folder, a results folder, folder and a template. Now, I'm not going to run this right now because it takes a little bit, so I'm going to just close the file. And I'm going to show you how the results after you run it. I do have a completely run analysis in a separate folder. So, if you remember, it read the results and another folder that's called Temp data. This is a folder that contains the log file. It's just for your information in case you want to see if everything ran correctly or if there's any errors. But the folder that you're after is the results folder, which will be automatically created every time you run it. Now, for um, For the batch, you can run it directly from 3DCS from this button. And as Spencer mentioned, in that case, it's using the license that was used for the 3DCS model. In case, let's say you want to get another model, you want to run multiple models at the same time. So we have the lesson seven model, and I also added the compliant model that's also in our uh, training folder. Um, for this compliant model, I just added WTX file and the uh, FE files that are important to run the results. So all the information is contained in these two files. If you were a regular model, obviously it doesn't need the FE file. And to run both of these files to batch, I edited the script file. So, when you first open the script file without changing anything into it, it has all this information telling you that it's loading the lesson seven, the one that was just created. And then it's running the thousand simulation with the seed number one on lesson seven. And then uh, it will do uh, the geo factor, and after everything is created, it will say different types of results. You can, that's the nice uh, thing about the batch file, you don't have to run your simulation and manually create all of these files, you will create them automatically as soon as you tell it to, this is the command to save that type of file. Now, I mentioned this other model. The easiest thing to do, you just pick up all those commands and add them for the second model. So you see I said, load the WTX file, run my 2000 simulation, and then um, these are the other commands to, to run, to load the simulation in order to save different types of results. And this is to load, it's running the sensitivity, then it's loading the sensitivity results to create these other types of results. And for geofactor, 
we have just one format for now. I'm sure we can add more formats, I just didn't add them in here. So, to summarize this, once you selected the batch processor and you launch this dialog, it creates the batch file, the script file, and a copy of the model. And in this, in this same folder, I added another model. And then I edited the script file to add the information for the second model that I wanted to be run to the batch file. Once this is complete, I'm going to show you what the batch file contains. So I'm going to edit it, not launch it. The batch file basically calls this script file and it tells you in this case where Katia is that because we're using the 3 dcst 5 and it's also telling you what kind of version the software is using and where the software is. So it tells you where to launch the software from uh, and where the CME macro, which is the executable that's used to do all this calculation, and it's finding also the text file that gives all the commands that will be executed. It's plain and simple. Once you did that, you just double click on the batch file because you don't want to run it in the software. It just will not remember that you added two files. So, once you run it from here, it will use a separate license. And when it's finished running, you will see the results. It populates everything into this results folder. And what do we have here? We have results for the model that I've added, the compliant model. And we have results for lesson seven, the mechanical model. It populates everything. And once you added these results, you can bring them into the model. Like you can uh, load simulation and sensitivity, for example, from our batch processor results. We can load any of these models. Let's, uh, let's say we want to do the one that actually loaded the lesson seven. and it loads your results into the model. It also has different formats. For example, the CSV format that will open all the results into itself. And this is the batch file in, in a nutshell. It's not a lot of editing happening to it. It's not a lot of uh, information has to be changed. 